And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Strange mathematical patterns appearing within a certain section of the genome. For heaven's sake! We knew the patterns weren't naturally occurring, explains Charles Watson, the lead scientist on the project, but we couldn't come up with any convincing explanation for them. On the whim, we started cross-referencing the patterns with language databases, he explains, and we were shocked to find that the patterns corresponded to ancient Aramaic. Stunned by its discovery, the team contacted language experts familiar with Aramaic, the language Jesus Christ spoke in daily life. Entirely decoded, the message reads, Hello my children. This is Yahweh, the one true Lord. You have found creation's secret. Now share it peacefully with the world. But now we know that an atom is not the smallest thing in the universe of reality. Atoms are made up of even smaller bits or particles or wave packets or substances of reality. And it appears that these elements are made up of even smaller elements and or energy forces. This was first discovered in the early 1900s. We also know that it is electromagnetic force, or some would call it light, that holds electrons and protons together in atoms, and which hold atoms together to make molecules. So, at its most basic level, the atom is held together by light. So, we now know that everything is made up of smaller and smaller parts. But we've also discovered that these small parts interact in ways in which we cannot describe by known laws of the universe. Quantum laws appear to be very different from the classical laws of nature. The quantum particles seem to be operating outside of our reality of time and space. We know, for example, that when one of these small parts is manipulated or stimulated in any way, it seems to instantly affect and cause reaction in the other small parts associated with it, which do not otherwise appear to be connected by any force or even connected by yet another small part. It doesn't even matter if these small parts are separated by great distances. They still react instantly to the stimulus applied to another part. It is as though they are tied together by some invisible force or energy, or some would even speculate, some unknown and immeasurable thought or communication process. This phenomena is known as the entanglement theory. This gives rise to the philosophical thought that since everything elemental was created or came into being in one big instant, then everything at the subatomic level is still connected or entangled and somehow reacts together. In addition to these strange phenomena, we have no way of exactly and precisely knowing where and when one of these small parts will be in any particular location or state. We can only speak about their location or state of existence in probabilities. For example, once a quantum state has been prepared for observation, some aspect of it is measured. For example, its position or energy. If the experiment is repeated, however, so as to measure the same aspect of the same quantum state, the result of the measurement will often be different. Some physicists even theorize that it is the very act of measurement or observation itself that causes the results to change. This is known in quantum physics as the measurement problem. Also, it seems apparent thus far, the smaller you go in the observation of these small parts and their interactions, the less and less of anything that we know as real seems to exist. Time and space and matter seem to disappear into nothingness. Philosophically, this is very challenging. Since we live in a real world with tangible objects existing in a time-space reality, yet we know that our reality is made up of the very particles which themselves seem to recede into nothingness, and they operate outside of time-space realities and natural laws of our material world. But how can this be? Welcome to just one more of the many conundrums of quantum mechanics. To most people, quantum mechanics is a very strange science. In all other scientific theories, we have tangible models of how we think things work. Quantum mechanics theory only describes how probabilities change with time. If you are confused by all of this, you then are in good company, as many scientists and physicists are on record as stating their confusion by it all. 
I do not think anyone has a good understanding of exactly what is going on within quantum mechanics, although many physicists are firmly convinced of the correctness of the particular interpretation that they favor. One thing is certain, as much as we do know about our world, our reality, and the universe, apparently there is an infinite universe of information that we do not know. Therefore, we are like ants looking at the moon at night, wishing we could just touch that big, bright, shiny light up above. Even though we, as an ant, can see it, we don't even remotely understand it or its distance from us, nor the element of space in which it exists. Much less do we have the ability, as an ant, to touch it. It simply will never happen, but we try and touch it anyway. And that, I am afraid, is our plight in grasping the vastness of information concerning quantum mechanics reality. this about the the god particle is that the same thing as the higgs boson so basically the higgs boson can explain why um, all these particles have mass without it we would be massless everything would be massless so that's why they call it the god particle do you think kids need to learn about astronomy first and then particle physics no maybe you should do it the other way around if you want to learn about astronomy the fundamental I want to remind you that Hebrew goes from right to left. Also, the word Torah in Hebrew is spelled with four letters. A Ta, which is roughly equivalent to our T, an O, a Resh, a He, um, four letters. If you go to the first How in the book of Genesis and 
uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet that happens, and you count 49 letters, you come to a vav, you count 49 more letters, and you come to a resh, which is sort of like our r, and you count 49 more letters, you come to a hey. So that is four, those four letters spelled Torah. Now I need to remind you that all languages flow towards Jerusalem. Did you know that? All nations east of Jerusalem go from right to left. All nations west of Jerusalem go from left to right. All languages flow towards Jerusalem. I don't know what you're going to do with that piece of information. <laughs> but I think it's interesting. Now, you can follow this without knowing Hebrew, probably, but you say, now why 49? What's the square of 7? Okay, that's fine. That's not, that's not too surprising. But just a coincidence, of course. Or is it? Now, you could argue, well, that's just an accident of the frequency of letters and so forth. It's kind of rare, but interesting. Except what happens is when you go to the book of Exodus, you go to the first tau, count 49 letters, you get a vav, 49 letters, you get a resh, 49 letters, and you get a hey. Same thing happens. What's the probability of that? Whatever the first probability is, it's that squared. <laughs> okay? So it's very unlikely. Genesis, Exodus, you go to Leviticus and it doesn't happen. And when it doesn't, you almost feel a sigh of relief. Huh? But when you go to Numbers, the same thing happens backwards. You take the first hey, the first resh, the first vav, the first tau, you get Torah spelled backwards. Now that's weird. What's, if nothing else, I don't know how they found this out. They must have had time on their hands. You know. <laughs> they didn't have computers. You know, this was... You go to Deuteronomy, you have essentially the same equivalent thing happens. And now you're puzzled because you've got it forward, forward, backward, backward. You can't resist going back to Leviticus and looking at Leviticus more closely. We have 49 and 7 squared letter sequences. Torah, Torah, forward in Genesis, Exodus, uh, backwards in Numbers and Deuteronomy. Well, if you look at Leviticus, you discover that every seventh letter spells the unpronounceable name of God. Yeshua are basically the letters of Asab. You can see Ayn, Shin, Vav. Even if you put the Yud, Asab is Yud. So the letter Yeshua are basically the letters of Asab, of Isu. Now, says the Arya Kadosh, says Rabbi Isaac Luria, it indicates that the men, that the Christians are serving, worshiping. Yeah.